that best settings for shooting video on a Sony A7S III coming up in this video. This will be an intense video sometimes with lots of information where I will go through the menus and settings. Some of the settings I will not go into the depth, I will maybe not even mention them. That is just because I don't use them or I just leave them at default setting. This video is all about to give you the fundamental settings in the camera so you can continue from there. So let me plug this camera into my computer so I can show you the menu system and how I have set everything up. So first off, we are in the shooting section and the image quality. Here I'm using HAVC S and 4K, and that is because I'm not using the CF Express card in the Sony A7S III. I'm using a V90 card from Lexar Professional. 300 megabyte per second V90. That is perfect card if you're gonna use everything except the all intra that gives the highest possible quality to the lowest compression, but then you need a CF Express card that is really expensive, so that's why I use don't bother. For the movie settings, here I have 25 frames per second. In the record settings, I have 140, 422, and 10-bit. Yes, I'm getting the best image quality I can get. Let's go to the S and Q settings. To get those dialed in, you need to set your mode dial to S and Q, because if you don't have that, you're not adjusting the settings for that section of the dial. So let's move that to S and Q. And then if we go to s and I have this one set to 25 frames per second. That's what I would like to record in. And then 200 frames per second. So this is the setting I have if I would like to shoot slow, slow motion. To be aware of is that when you use the s and mode, you are not recording any audio. Record settings for s and 50, 422, 10 bit. Let's turn back the dial to the audio video setting. And then proxies, I'm not using. If I use proxies, I create that in Final Cut Pro. After I got a MacBook Pro with M1 chip, I don't even need to use the proxies anymore. But when I use my Intel MacBook Pro, I need a proxy all the time for the computer to manage to edit that. For media, this is just where you format your SD card. This is how the media is stored on your SD card. So I first store to slot one. I have standard, that means that I first fill up one card, then the next card, so then I can switch between two cards. Basically, yes, continue recording forever. Auto switch between the medias. These ones I don't use. Next, the file settings. Here I have file number. I have set that one to series. Here I've set up so all my files start with S3 for Sony A7S III, and then an A for my A camera, and then a B for my B camera. And at the bottom, you can see what the file name would look like. Let's go to the shooting mode. For the exposure, I always shoot in manual. That means that I can control both my aperture that I've set to the dial in the front and my shutter speed that I have on the dial in the back. And if you would like to see how I set up my custom buttons, you can check out this video. Let's go back. Camera set memory. This is where you go if you would like to save a setting into your favorite settings on the camera. I'm gonna go through that in a future video. Audio recording is on, of course. I have this one preset to 25, just because 25 is a good level if I'm recording anything without any external microphone. This one's I'm not using. Audio level display I'm using, and if that one is on, you can see here that I have this channel one and channel two. If I disable that one, those disappear and I don't have them anymore, but I need to have them so we know that we are within a good range. TBUC, I don't use time code. Image stabilization, I have that one on active. The only time I'm not having the steady shot on is if I use it on a tripod or if I use it on a gimbal, then I also turn it off. The zoom settings, I use the clear image zoom that gives me up to 1.5 times zoom. And that is a digital zoom that looks amazing, so you can't even see that it's zoomed in. So that means even if you are in a prime lens where you don't have any zoom, you can actually punch in up to 1.5 times. Shooting display, I don't use any grids. This one, however, emphasize display during record. That is an important one. Let's turn it off. I go back here and now I start record. I see this small wreck under the volume and that is the only thing that indicates that I'm actually recording anything. If I turn that one on and I start recording, an entire monitor turns red with this big red frame around and that is just amazing. Marker, I don't use that. 
Exposure, this is where you set your ISO. Exposure compensation, I'm not using that one. Metering, I'm using metering mode is multi. Phase priority in multi metering is on. White balance, I have it always set up to 5600 Kelvin because that is what I'm using in my Nanolite power tube 26C and also on my lights in my studio and that is daylight. And that usually works also when you're outside. So that is what I have preset. Tone and color, this one I turn off. When it comes to the picture profiles, I always shoot in picture profile eight or basically I always shoot in S log three, but that is saved under picture profile eight. And the only thing I've changed here is that a color mode I've changed to S Gamma 3 Cine. Next is Zebra displays. I've Zebra on and I've set Zebra level to custom 41%. And that is because when I use a gray card, I know that 41% is the correct exposure for X log 3. So when I know that I get the zebras on the gray card, I know that I have a perfect exposure. Next one, we are into the focus section of the menu. And here you set and toggle between autofocus and manual focus. I mapped all of these to my custom button, so don't forget to watch that video after this one. When it comes to the focus area, I almost always shoot in wide because that is the one that works best for all the purpose that I'm using it. I have always so limited that the only ones that I have access to is wide, zone, spot small and expandable spot. I'm using wide 95% of the time and if I need to really set the focus to the middle or a section of my frame, I switch to spot small. I have the focus area color set to red. Eye and face autofocus. This is a very important setting. And that means that the camera will try to focus on an eye or the face if you can't find an eye. There is one time when you should turn it off. And that is, for example, say that I should may do a product review of this Rode Wireless Go 2 and I hold that one up like this then it will still focus on my eye because the camera can see my eye. If I turn that setting off it will focus on the product or the thing that is closest to the camera. If you would like to see that more in depth, I have a video up here that is set to human and I auto switch between left and right eyes. So it's always focusing on the ones that is closest to the camera. Next is focus assistant. This one I use a lot actually. That means that I map that one to the middle button here and then I magnify the picture four times as it says down here and then I can just really nail the focus and then I can just tap that button again and I'm back out for magnification. And I've set that one to no limit because I don't want the camera to automatically switch back and out from that magnification. I would like to do that manually by clicking that button. The peaking display is that I'm getting red markers, whatever is in focus. When it comes to playback target, this is nothing really that I'm um, fiddling around with too much. I don't really do so much here either. Uh, what I do use that is this one, the setup section of the camera. Here we have of course the language, but this is also where you switch between NTSC and PAL. And to note there is that if you change that setting, the camera reboots. Here is where you set up the custom buttons in the camera and that is what I mentioned before that I have a specific video about. Touch operations, I have the touch operations on. Finder monitor, well this is the settings I have here. Power options, here I have set the auto power off temperature to high. That is just so I avoid the camera to auto shut off if it's getting too warm. Sound option, this is audio signals. That is the one that can disable, you know, the signal when you start recording and you stop recording. This is not really anything that I deal so much with. That is the go through of all the settings in the Sony A7S III. If you want me to go in depth in any of these settings a little bit more, please drop a comment below. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up if it gave some value to you and smash that subscribe button if you haven't subscribed to this channel already. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video over and out from Canada. Bye.